next speaker is Kobad uh, Bavnagri. He's um, from the Bloomberg New Energy Finance. Uh, he's actually the head of Australia. And he's talking about paradigm shifts. And one of the questions that he's going to hopefully answer for us today is whether a global renewable energy future is, in fact, inevitable or not. Kobad, I wonder what the answer is. Give him a round of applause. Thank you, and, uh, and hello to everyone. Um, so what I want you to take away today uh, from my little talk is that the energy sector is in transition, but things aren't happening fast enough yet. So these are our projections for what is going to be invested in new power generating infrastructure from now until 2030. And we do a lot of this work, we, we build up all these forecasts, um, and, and we supply these to mainly the, the big end of town. And what you can see here, clearly, is that renewable energy is in ascendancy while fossil fuels are in decline. And this is what's being built anew. So from now until 2030, we forecast that there'll be about $7.5 trillion invested in new power generating infrastructure. And five trillion of those dollars will be in renewable technologies. Now the reason for that is that renewables today are already cost competitive with fossil fuels or cheaper in many parts of the world. And that's because renewable energy is a high technology solution that just like mobile phones and just like computers has been getting cheaper with time and better with time. And both of those things as we produce more and more of it. And so we see all sorts of places around the world where renewables are now cheaper. In Australia, if we needed to build a new power station, it would be the cheapest to build it using wind energy. And this trend is just going to continue and continue, where the economics of renewables are stronger than the economics of fossil fuels. However, it's not enough to get rid of what already exists in the ground. Think about it like once your house is built, it's very, very difficult for someone to convince you that now you need to demolish it. So one thing you have to remember is that the future is built upon the past. And the decisions of the past mean that today we genera generate about 80% of our electricity globally from fossil fuels. And that's what this little bar here represents. The black at the bottom is, is coal and the gray there is gas. And coal, of course, being the dirtiest, the most polluting uh, fuel, is a big problem. Now, look what happens in the future. As renewable energy grows, those nice, colorful segments up the top, uh, that fantastic growth that we see, it's, it's providing most of the growth in energy demand as, as the population um, grows and people want more and more energy. However, the black bar at the bottom doesn't change. In fact, it actually grows slightly. And so does the grey bar. And that, re that represents all of the gas and the coal that we burn today and we will continue to burn until 2030 on the current economics. And that is at the crux of the emissions problem. Right now, the economics suggest all of that is going to hang around and it's not going to go away. And so from a carbon emissions perspective, we're really on, set on quite a bad trajectory. But there are some forces that are working to change this. And Simon mentioned one of these, and this is a financial, uh, a financial driver called the fossil fuel divestment movement. And this is moving very, very fast, and the big end of town are very conscious of it. And once the major Wall Street type of banks and fund managers start to move money out of coal, then we could start to see disruption and change and withdrawal of some of that capacity. But it's a big if. The other thing is that technologies are changing. And the way we relate to energy is rapidly changing. Uh, now, more than ever, people are generating their own electricity using solar power. And that's reducing demand from the grid of which most of that energy is supplied by coal. The other thing is uh, new technologies are enabling us to use less energy and to use it in different ways that is more efficient. Again, reducing uh, the, the centralized coal and gas generation. And then, of course, there is pollution. And in the developing world, and in particular China, pollution is so bad that people are literally rioting in major cities about it. 
And this really underscores and represents the fact that now we know there are better ways to generate our electricity than to burn fossil fuels. And increasingly, people like you and people who suffer this, uh, this sort of world are going to demand better and better solutions. But one of the important things really for everybody to realize is that the solutions are very unlikely to come from politics. The UN is not, is not going to facilitate a global kumbaya moment where all the world's governments decide that they're going to do something to tackle the emissions problem. Fundamentally, it's going to come from economic drivers, and most of those are going to be acting in their own self-interest. But when the self-interest is protecting yourself from risk, uh, diversifying your fuel mix, and ending problems like this, there is lots of hope that things could radically change. And on that radical change, uh, let me tell you this. Human beings are very, very bad at predicting it. So AT&T, a major telecommunications company in the US, commissioned McKinsey, one of the world's uh, greatest management consultants, in the year 1980 to say, how many mobile phones will be in use in the year 2000? And McKinsey looked at this and came up with a really rational analysis that said, uh, look, the batteries are really bad, they don't last long, mobile phones are heavy, they cost a lot, and the coverage for the network is terrible. So we estimate only about 700,000 will be in use in the year 2000. Today, we sell that many mobile phones almost every day. And the same is true of the energy sector. This chart here shows what the International Energy Agency's projections were for the deployment of renewable energy in the year 2001. And this is what happened every year as they got it wrong and it was exceeded and their forecast went up and up and up, doubling almost every time. And that line at the top is our view, which is more bullish than anybody, any of their uh, major forecasters out there. And yet still we, we have been wrong. And we can only really hope for the sake of uh, the planet uh, that people like us are very wrong and that the disruptive change and some of the solutions you're going to hear about today uh, will make things change much, much faster. Thank you.